This video brought to you in part by the Patreon supporters of Cobra TV. Thanks for coming back to Cobra Reviews. Cool stuff that shoots and goes fast. <laughs> you have to excuse me. I'm on Lorville. Uh, why am I here? Well, the best stuff that you can get, you know, from uh, underground, you know, from the, you know, the dark shadows. Got the best stuff around here. Just don't tell anybody. And today we're going to shoot the Coda pistol. Me and Vega are going to take it out uh, probably somewhere around, not around here. Uh, and uh, just take it out on the range and just uh, put some rounds out on a target or something. Just kind of review the Coda pistol. But let's learn a little bit about Castac Arms before we go down that route. They kind of fall along the lines of the same uh, business uh, uh, beginnings as Drake a little bit. Uh, but Castac Arms, they make these inexpensive energy weapons with these intimidating names like Devastator and Firestorm. Firestorm. Yes, uh, the one that's so rare no one has ever seen anywhere around at all. And they aggressively market these firearms to distressed parts of the Empire. But even though the company portrays itself as providing weapons for personal defense, Kaztec has become more readily identified with people who use them for aggressive and unlawful things. It was in the early 27th century, shortly after Virgil fell to the Vandal. The Vega system was not only flooded with refugees, uh, but it, it suddenly became part of the conflict's front line. The looming threat of attack uh, drove businesses and the public from the prosperous planet of Selene. But those that chose to stay and or could not afford to leave uh, worried about what would happen if a vandal attack cut them from the rest of the empire. So Selene's governor's council strove to make their planet self-sufficient but with no native personal defense weapons manufacturer, they decided to create their own. Technically, Kastak Arms was established in 2738 as a public-private partnership between Selene's Governor's Council and the Consortium of Local Business Interest. It was named after the first city to fall to the Vandal and the attack on Virgil. The company's mission statement was to make powerful weapons available to Selene's public at a modest price. So if the invasion came, all citizens and civilians would be able to defend themselves. Despite the hysteria, the Vandal attack on Selene never happened. It never came. Instead, the planet became awash with weapons and combined with an unstable economy, uh, this was attributed to the rising crime rates. Then we got the other flip side of that. The public safety groups protested that the governor's council was profiting Welcome off the Metro violence Center. caused by Castac Arms. Perimeter. In 2953, a rogue Castac executive was arrested after tampering with Vega's early warning system for Vandal attacks. You can, you can you believe that? And this was uh, in an effort to spur sales. And it worked. Uh, Celine's governor's council moved to dissolve the company. The consul's lone dissenting voice was Hiram Larcher, who delayed the vote, allowing Castac's private partners the time to put together a bid to buy the consul's stake in the company. <laughs> Larcher successfully lobbied the governor's council into taking the bid, then promptly resigned from his seat uh, to become Castac's CEO. Pretty crazy beginning, huh? Today's Castac Arms is the result of Hiram Larcher's vision. Once the company became a wholly private endeavor, Larcher implemented policies that he had been pushing for on the governor's console. Here's where it really gets good. Larcher brought the brand back to Bremen amidst a, a massive ad campaign uh, featuring this poster of like this attractive model standing over a dead vandal and holding a cast tack shotgun you know the devastators uh and this the ad read there's a reason the vandal avoid vega that's badass and uh, anyway this sparked a heated debate among the pundits of the on the spectrum uh which generated a windfall of like this free advertising for cast tack i mean it was just like you know uh, there's no such thing as bad press. <laughs> Anyways, the sales climbed, like just skyrocketed and allowed the company to increase operations across the empire. So as the company expanded, it quickly started to notice that it was 
better for its bottom line to advertise on the streets of Hyperion instead of uh, on the salons of Terra. Of course, <laughs> that's a no-brainer. Uh, so before the company entered a new system, they would make aggressive ad buys in low-income areas and letting its uh, uh, persuasive and provocative ads stir up consumer interest and controversy before its weapon landed on the shelves. Pretty smart, huh? And to this day, ads for the Castec Arms are a common sight in lower-income neighborhoods like uh, Newcastle and uh, uh, Tram. But when the critics charge that Castac spurs violence in such areas, the company officials point to the high sales and affordable ad space as justification for its practices. You know, it's like Larcher once said in the interview, very bluntly, I might add, that these people need affordable guns. Look how much crime and violence they have to deal with. Do you know how dangerous it would be for them to go unarmed? He's got a point, right? Uh, over the years, Castac Arms has worked hard to cultivate an image as a corporate underdog. A common thread in its marketing is to portray itself as the much maligned gun manufacturer whose only mission is to provide a cheap protection for the masses. Sound familiar? Drake Interplanetary. <coughs> This image, or whatever, is more of an advertising ploy, though. Historians credit Castac Arms with playing a pivotal role in the overthrow of Ariana Fendi, which was Locke's dictatorial ruler during the uh, 29th century. Um, anyway, so the availability of the Castac weapons allowed uh, Omar Astacio to arm the planet's oppressed populace. Um, and then following the revolution, Astacio sent the official flag of Locke's new government to Castac Arms as a thank you. The flag was framed and has been displayed in the lobby of the company's corporate headquarters ever since. Oh wait, more recently, the company came to the aid of the Asora police uh, after they went on strike. They, they went on strike because of their complaints about being outnumbered by criminals. Um, and, and, and after hearing this, like Castac donated a crap ton of, of firearms to the force to upgrade their capabilities. I mean, a crap ton. And it was a smart move, it was, but it was a shrewd maneuver that has brought the company a wave of goodwill. So, yeah, I mean, there you have it. That's Castac Arms in a nutshell. Um, so let me go by what I was going to pick up in the shadows here from uh, a person I will not name. Then I'm going to go pick up Vega. We'll grab a bite to eat and we'll head on over to Microtech somewhere out in the wilderness and just uh, have fun shooting. Hey, what's up, citizens? Today we're going to be taking out the Coda pistol from Castac Arms. And I'm going to be putting a few rounds through it here at uh, uh, Microtech and kind of tell you how what you know what we feel about it. And if you've been thinking about getting one, a uh, new firearm, like, like we all like we all want, uh, stay tuned because uh, we're going to give it a nice little field test. Okay, stop recording. Push no, push the button on the on the left. <laughs> Before we get started in this video, I would like to state that this uh, episode is sponsored by Drake. Uh, if you're looking for an affordable ship uh, with minimalistic features uh, and that could get the job done, uh, could be uh, your EDD, your everyday driver, uh, great storage room, great weapons, uh, great self-defense vehicle, um, then pick up a Drake today, a Drake Cutlass Black. And right behind me, which we might be taking a look at later, is the Drake Mule. That's right. Uh, so yes, uh, shop Drake and uh, let Drake save you after the fleet leaves.
All right, guys, what's up? Uh, we're here in Microtech. It's really cold here. Maybe we should have done this over at Hurston, but I think you can uh, get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> and I know you can get in trouble for shooting uh, firearms if you get caught over Hurston, but it's such a big place. Maybe we'll do some shooting over there. Uh, maybe we can get away with it. It is kind of cold here, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. Guys, this is the Coda pistol. Um, it is a 50 caliber uh, pistol. Holds uh, six rounds, and it's made by Castac Arms, and uh, packs a big punch. And I use this a lot when I'm bounty hunting, uh, or when I'm, you know, just clearing out some bunkers, or taking with me for my everyday carry uh, for self-defense. What about you, Vega? Do you use it? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, me too. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some shooting going on here. We got some targets downrange, uh, and uh, we're gonna just test it out. Put some rounds through it so this uh you know this is the vanilla state this is how, how it looks when you get it right out of the box uh it's a uh, very heavy it's a very heavy pistol it's made out of all steel um and uh it uh it shoots well out of the box but we're gonna take a couple shots with it like this uh like it is right out of the box and then we're gonna go ahead and throw some attachments on it and uh see how it runs uh like that um but uh vega you want to take uh take the first shots? Sure. All right. So the wind was uh pretty something pretty fierce. So what we're gonna do is we put the boxes on the cutty black and we turned off the shields. Uh, this will also be a good test for the cutty black to show you how well it stands up to everyday gunfire, which I know you're going to probably encounter uh going to various places around uh the verse uh so vega's gonna take some shots here we got three targets up there and um we're gonna see how well she does and how well the gun does always uh also make sure you're wearing proper ear protection we have uh micro uh ear ear blocks in um all right vega go ahead take a shot take a shot at those three boxes there Good job, good job. I think you missed one. Thank you. Did I? Did you, did you get it? I thought I got it. Go ahead and use all the ammo you got in that thing. There you go. That's it. I'm out. All right, she's out. So as you can see, uh, the gun, it, uh, it does shoot well. The sights are really good on it. Uh, the iron sights on it, but uh, let's see how well the gun does when we start putting attachments onto it. I'm going to go get a Coda set up and uh, with some attachments on it, and I'll get her set up with some more ammo, and uh, she can empty uh, an another uh, magazine. Don't point the gun at me. Okay, stay right there. Okay, Vega's going to empty another mag, and then we're going to go ahead and get one set up with the sights and uh, suppressor. All right, Vega, let it rip. All right. Nice shot. Thank you. Hit that middle one. There you go. There you go. Hit that. Oh, yeah. What a good shot. Yep. I'm out. All right. So now we're back. And as you can see, we got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of hardware on this gun now. Uh, we got a suppressor on here. We got a Delta. Uh, from NVTAC uh, optics optic uh, on there and uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and shoot this and uh, I don't know see how it runs all right so what we got on this thing right here right now is a Delta uh, one time size one uh, sight from uh, uh, it's a holographic sight from uh, I believe this one was from NVTAC but I can't uh, be sure I believe it is yes it is new tack uh, NVTAC actually uh, we got a suppressor on here, and then we got a a, a, a field light um, from New NVTAC as well, and uh, it does add a lot of weight to the gun. Um, but uh, you guys, I guess you know, you just have to suffer that, I guess, if you want to uh, have a little bit of uh, some of the extra stopping power. All right, let's run some uh, rounds down the range and uh, see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> It'd help if I had some ammo. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, go out to our first target here. Nice. There we go. There we go. As you can see right there, man, I mean, it is super quiet with that, uh, uh, with that, um, suppressor on there. Uh, but all in all, it is a very nice gun. Very heavy. Uh, definitely not something I would use to conceal with. Uh, and if you're carrying this thing, pff, they're going to know you're carrying this thing. And, uh, I, you know what? As, as far as Vegas, as far as the suppressor goes, I mean, unless you're trying to be tactful, uh, I want, uh, you, know, you fire this thing at you know, one pirate, the other pirates, they're going to run immediately as soon as they hear that loud bang from Dakota. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's just have fun and shoot the crap out of it without the suppressor. I like that bang. Oh, no, it's, this is a great gun. A really, a really good gun. If you're thinking about getting a Dakota, don't hesitate. Pick one up at Grim Hex. Yeah, that recoils something else. That's it. I'm out. Let it rip, Vega. I'm out. Good job. Good job. Thank you. All right. So to sum it up, uh, pros and cons. I don't have any cons about this firearm whatsoever i mean it works well it's intimidating looking it's built well it was a budget gun it is still a budget gun uh but uh i mean that doesn't that that's that's not really stopping i mean it from having good quality but i mean it's uh it's it's got a damage drop rate of uh 0 0.8 meters uh it's max range shoots about 1100 meters uh so not too bad there um, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's a DPS, you know, of course, after about f at, at, from z zero meters, it's like uh, 41, uh, 0.4 DPS. And then when you get to like 50 meters away, it drops down to about 35.64, uh, DPS. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can pick these up at Grim Hex, uh, pretty cheap. And the ammo is dirt cheap as well. And uh, just buy it by the bulk and just store it and keep it. Take it out and shoot it. Go with that with your friends, you know, have fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's the review on Nakoda. Um, in our next video, I want to go ahead and do the other uh, 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 Kastak uh, arms weapon that we have over at Grim Hacks, the uh, Devastator, which is an energy blast shotgun. Uh I'm not too much of a shotgun guy, especially when it comes to energy. Um, I'm old-fashioned like ballistics. So we'll see. We'll take a look at that in another uh, video. But thank you so much for um, uh, coming out. Let's go ahead and mess around with the mule. All right. Yeah, so there's our Drake Cutlass Black that we're probably going to be taking on all these uh, field tests, range tests, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, the mule over here as well, which is Drake's new offering. Uh, great if you're going to go out and do some looting. You can throw your boxes up there in the in the rack system. Uh, it's even got a place here for some cargo uh, to go up underneath. Uh, it's a good all-purpose vehicle. Vega, why don't you go ahead and uh, get on the inside and take it for a spin. Uh, right. This vehicle turns on, uh, on its axis, so uh, you don't need to go forward in order to turn. You can just do a whole 360. Uh, gotta get in through the front right here. I've even seen oh. people, uh, haul dead bodies in that, uh, rack system. There's a button right here in the front. It's highlighted blue. Oh, I see it. There you go. Alright, get in and take a cruise. Take a cruise around, you know, take it for a spin. Maybe go around the Cutlass Black. Come on back. Tell me what you think. I like the little thing, man. It's it's pretty fast. Uh, pretty touchy. Yeah, look at you go. Holy crap. 
I like that. There you go. Pretty good little, little uh, vehicle, huh? Yeah, it runs real smooth. And Drake even uh, proclaims that it cannot be tipped over. And you know what? I believe him. I absolutely believe him. Oh, no. There we go. Drake Interplanetary. Pretty See, cool looking, uh, pretty, pretty cool looking little car, man. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. It's awesome. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Um, hope you guys catch us, catch us in our next episode. We'll be taking a look at uh, a few things. We're not going to just do one gun per episode. We're going to do multiple guns, multiple vehicles, uh, stuff like that. So if you like, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out. And uh, remember, stay armed, stay safe, and may the verse be with you.